So believe it or not, animals really don't want to be killed. Animals are generally very afraid of their predators and they use cues to avoid running into them. So for example, if you're a ground squirrel, you might not know exactly where in real time every hawk in your area is, but maybe you know the types of habitats that they like to hang out in. Um, and so you can use that cue habitat type to gauge how risky you think an area is in terms of encountering hawks, and then you can avoid high risk areas. But what happens when those cues are unreliable? So animals may be responding to them, but if the, key, the cues aren't accurately reflecting risk, then behaviors based on those cues won't really be effective at minimizing an animal's risk of being killed. And this can result in ecological traps, which are when animals actually prefer risky areas. And in terms of population viability, this could be, um, this could be kind of worrying if they're preferring to hang out in areas where they're more likely to die in. So large carnivores don't have to worry about other predators, but they do have to worry about us. So large carnivores are frequently killed by people, especially in fragmented environments, and anthropogenic mortality is of pretty high conservation concern for a lot of these populations. Large carnivores also generally behave as if humans were their predators, avoiding people both in space and time. But we don't really know whether these behaviors are effective at reducing their risk of being killed. And if not, this could present an ecological trap. So the study system that I'm using to try to address this question is the puma population in the Santa Cruz Mountains. And this is a fragmented environment and pumas live alongside rural and exurban residential development and they exhibit avoidance of um, human structures. And the leading single cause of death for pumas in this population is depredations, which is when pumas are killed by people after eating a livestock animal, which in our area is mainly goats. So, I set out to evaluate whether depredations are an ecological trap. And specifically, I'm asking where on the landscape are depredation events most likely to occur and whether puma avoidance reflects these high risk areas. And I'm doing this using data from GPS collars that we've deployed on pumas in this area. So to start out, um, I'm showing you where depredations are most likely to happen on the landscape. And it turns out they are most likely to occur at intermediate levels of housing density. So um, on this graph, I've plotted the relative risk of depredation across housing density on the x-axis. And you can see that risk kind of peaks at these intermediate or lowish levels of housing density rather than scaling directly with housing density. And now we can ask um, how and whether puma movement reflects this risk. So the x-axis on this graph is the same as what you saw in the previous graph. Um, it's the gradient of housing density in our area. And the yellow shaded area on this graph um, is our levels of housing that, oh, sorry, levels of housing density that are associated with high depredation risk, which was where that curve was in the previous graph. So I'm going to be plotting strength of avoidance that pumas show towards housing on this graph, and positive values are avoidance and negative values are preference. And if pumas are kind of responding appropriately to these high risky areas, then we would hope to see them avoiding the housing densities that fall in this yellow kind of risky area. Puma movement behavior looks pretty different um, during the day compared to night, so we'll start out with the daytime response. Um, and here you see that they're behaving pretty appropriately. So they're exhibiting avoidance, so positive values across this risky yellow shaded range. So now let's take a look at, at night, which is the solid line that I just added. And here we see that avoidance is substantially relaxed. Um, and this is probably because pumas feel safer at night. They have kind of the cover of darkness to sneak around in. And also human activity is generally lower. And you can see that pumas are actually exhibiting preference for these high risk areas at night. So this kind of dip below zero in the yellow shaded region. And this is a real problem because the vast majority of depredation killings actually happen at night. So all of the depredation killings that we have recorded have happened between dusk and dawn. So basically during times when risk from humans is highest, pumas are preferring rather than avoiding these risky areas. And this means that depredation killings are an ecological trap for, for pumas in this area. And we can consider the spatial extent of this problem um, by projecting these results across the landscape. So the top map shows just the kind of model for depredation risk that I showed you uh, plotted across the Santa Cruz Mountains. And the bottom graph is habitat preference, again at night. And we can combine these graphs to um, highlight areas where risk is high and where pumas are exhibiting preference. And these are our trap habitats. And they're highlighted in red. And basically what we see here is that this is kind of a widespread spatial extent across our study area. These trap habitats are not sort of spatially confined, they're affecting a relatively wide 
swath of area across the mountains, which likely impact many, many different pumas. So just to kind of wrap up, um, my research shows that exurban development does present an ecological trap for pumas in the Santa Cruz Mountains. And this is the first time that this type of Q behavior mismatch has been shown for a large carnivore species. And it has some conservation and management implications. So it's likely that this phenomenon is widespread. So large carnivores may be coming into conflict with people just because they don't know how risky it is to be in a certain place, especially when other human risk cues are low. And so with that in mind, improving livestock husbandry and protecting livestock from carnivores better, especially in these trap habitats, could go a long way to righting this behavioral mismatch and keeping both um, livestock and carnivores more safe. So with that, thanks so much for your attention and I'm happy to take any, any questions. <laughs>